My name is Zach Porter with MonumentHockeyReport.com. This is my co-writer, Matthew Harding. We want to start by thanking the Missouri Mavericks, uh, Brent Thiessen, and everybody involved with the Fan Fest for having us, and especially the players, uh, for the Q&A session. So without any further ado, uh, let's get started. All right, the uh, first question is for the captain of the Missouri Mavericks, Sebastian Tittle. And Sebastian, you are at seven straight 80 point seasons. The next 80 point season that you have, which you hear 1,000 regular season points in the CHL, maybe the uh, all time leading score. With the addition of Gary Bembridge and the signings of John Scott Nixon and Andrew Courtney, have you given much thought to what it would mean to hold that record? Uh, no, actually, no. We just. You know, I'm excited that those guys are back and with all the new players we're getting. And uh, I mean, all I want is winning championships. So uh, Coach Matvichuk is putting a pretty good team together. And that's all I've been thinking all summer. I don't, uh, if you know me, I don't really care about the points. It's, uh, you know, I know it's my job, but at the end of the day, if you win the game, that's what matters. Sticking with Sebastian, you have a, a twin brother that's also a uh, quite decorated scorer in France. Talk a little bit about what it was like growing up with a twin that you could play hockey with and, and what it was like to, to share successful careers with him with a brother. Yeah, uh, it's, been, it's been special to be honest. Uh, we've been playing together from three years old to 19 years old. As a uh, I mean, minor pro, minor and a junior major, major junior. But uh, it's been great. I mean, have a twin brother on the ice, and we could find each other pretty easily. And uh, it's kind of like Courts and Dixon, you know, they find each other on the ice. They're pretty much twin brothers too. But it's uh, it's been you know, it's uh, I only had a chance to play with uh, with him once, one year in France there, or as a professional, but. Uh, it's been great. We talk every day, and uh, obviously we look alike, and uh, I think he's very handsome. <laughs> very honest answer there. Let's move over to uh, Dave Shinichny, and uh, I think the big question that all of us want to know is, what is the best chirp that you've hung up heard on the ice about your last name? Uh, I don't really think I can you know, say it very well. But, uh, <laughs> No, I get a lot of like A5 or U blank, uh, alphabet soup, can I buy a vowel, uh, you know, just Dave, the uh, announcer in St. Charles, so that's, yeah, that's probably the extent of the last name. But if you were a member of the 2010-11 CHL champion Coach of Shreveport Budbugs, in your opinion, what is one quality that every championship team has to have? Um, you know, you're going to need your guys like John Scott Dixon blocking shots, Boston mucking it up in the corners, uh, Sebi scoring goals, Corks scoring goals. Um, you know, all-star teams don't win championships, and that's for a reason. I just think that... Uh, the guys that have the character in the room, that you have the best chemistry, is going to win a championship through the grind of the playoffs. We move on to Andrew Courtney. And Andrew, last season was your best best girl with uh, 68 points in 62 games and another five in the playoffs. What do you attribute that career season to? Uh, I think Sebastian Tanel. I think every uh, goal I scored was probably assisted by him. Uh, no, I think just staying healthy. Like I was able to uh, play most of uh, the season minus my suspension games. But uh, other than that, I think just being healthy and uh, not getting any uh, bumps or bruises that took me out of any games. We won't ask you about those suspension games. That's uh, let's move on to Evan Boston. And Evan, uh, if you're headed into your third season as a pro, uh, you you improved from your rookie season on, on scoring. Um, how do you continue to improve your game and continue to, to move up with your scoring? And what do you do during the offseason to keep working towards uh, further into your career? Well, I don't think uh, in the offseason a lot's changed for me. I think every year, uh, 
that you start a new season, especially uh, you become more familiar with things, and I think it's just small things. And, uh, the more you play, the more you get used to uh, you know playing in this league and how everything you know, works. Um, plus, you have guys that are in the dressing room that are you know professionals for a few years, and you learn certain things from them. And, uh, certain things that I probably don't need to learn either, but uh, <laughs> no, it's been, it's been great when, you know, the, the tighter, the closer uh, group of guys you have, the easier it is to learn uh, certain things in terms of uh, improving the game. We move on to uh, John Scott Dixon, and we have a lot of experience with not only the Mavs, but uh, some games in the East Coast hockey league. How do you use that experience as one of the more veteran guys on this team coming uh, into the season? How do you use that experience to help the younger guys like Evan Boston and, and those still coming up? How do you help them all? I feel like with with any team, um, you can't have your clicks and, and stuff like that. You need good camaraderie. I try to reach out to the, the younger guys and any team that I've played on. When you have a tighter team, obviously, it, you know, transfers onto the ice. So for me personally, um, that's what I try to do. Um, can't speak for, for anybody else. I really don't know what they do, but Chesney. All right, this is the part where you guys get to pass the microphone back and forth a little bit quicker. Uh, this is for all of you guys, so whoever wants to start first, we'll start down here with Evan and move down, but in one word, describe your game, how you play this, uh, your style of play. Complete. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Ugly. Yo-yo. <laughs> Plug. <laughs> That's an interesting way to describe your game, but I'm not First line, second line, third line, plug. We have the roll, doesn't matter where. Just plug. Just where I'm on. Third line, plug. Right Me and Voss. <laughs> Grocery stick. This question to answer each of you what does it mean? We'll, we'll exclude some action to this. What does it mean to have? Captain and leader like Sebastian Tell on this team throughout four years with uh, throughout Sebastian's four years in Missouri and now moving forward with the new coach and Richard Well, we might have to open up the doors bigger down there for his head. Uh, no, he, uh, he brings a lot to the, the team and uh, to the community and, you know, some guys wouldn't be hitting points uh, if he were on, you know, on his line, but, uh, yeah, he brings his game every, uh, every game, every day, so it's, uh, it's good to have him out. Um, I think as of right now, we don't have any French guys on the team other than Sebi, so it'll be good not to hear French going on in the room all game, but, um, no, seriously, uh, Sebi's obviously one of the all-time greatest players in, in the Central Hockey League and minor pro hockey, so, um, to have him as, you know, our leader and, and someone that, you know, we know that he wants to win, and, and when you have your captain and you know that he wants to win, it just, you know, makes... Makes you want to, uh, you know, win for him. He's been a little time, and then obviously you want to win for yourself. I just think it's uh, great that I had an opportunity to play with this guy because playing against him wasn't very easy. But uh, you know, he might not be the most vocal guy in the room, but he shows it on the ice why he's a leader. So I think you know when you strap up and skates every day, you see the way that he. Uh, <clears throat> takes the game being uh, uh, 31 years old, uh, you know, and shows a lot. And you know, the younger guys like John Scott Dixon at 25 years, uh, you know, could take a few things from them. I think most of the guys have touched on it. Really good, but, uh, you know, looking at Sebi's success, uh, there's no no players uh, this year. Uh, also, as a as a player, I 
as John Scott referred to it as a plug. Uh, it's kind of frustrating to watch Sebi play because everything he does is very effortless and it seems so easy for him. So, I kind of resent him for that, I guess. <laughs> You look around right now at the Independence Event Center and you see all these fans. Talk about what it's like to play in front of a packed house of orange seats every single night uh, at the Independence Event Center with these great fans. It's great. Uh, been uh, Mystic for a long time and this is obviously the best best fans in the league. I mean, every, I know every player and every team says that. Uh, I, I'm probably the one that I know the most. I've been around a long time. As this this level, you guys are the best. Uh, I mean, each game, you know, don't matter if it's a Tuesday, Monday, Friday, Saturday, it don't matter. You guys are here, and uh, win or lose, you guys are behind us. Probably happier when we win, but uh, it's part of the game, I guess. But you guys are great, and uh, I think all the players are very thankful for that. I think that what makes uh, a lot of us, you know, come back to Missouri is the support that we have uh, from the fans uh, and the community. That's why I like it here. That's why I want to keep coming back here. Uh, there's a reason why was it four years of the franchise of the year, the fans have a lot to do with it. So I think that's just a feather of everybody's hat. Well, I think if you look at the you know, franchise of the year and then the best fan banners. I think that kind of says what uh, the community and the fans here have done for this team. So, uh, you know, being able to say I play for the Missouri Mavericks is quite an honor. Um, and there's people around the whole state that know who the Missouri Mavericks are, so I think that's pretty cool. And it, it's all because of the Orange Army and the Peanut Gallery. Yeah, once, uh, once you walk out those doors into the hallway onto the ice, if you're not ready for the game, you're going to be ready once you step on the ice and see the fans, you know, in every seat possible. It's not, it's not like uh, just games, it's practices too. It's, it's always, always fun to come to a full house because there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of places that don't sell out and it's very tough to get up for a game, but you're always up for the games at home because you want to put on for a good show for the fans. Um, kind of what Sammy touched on a bit, um, kind of you see press releases and stuff like that. You see players say, oh, it's good to be back and play in front of the best fans. And I kind of giggle a little bit because it's, I, don't, I don't really know where they're getting that from. We obviously play in front of the best fans. And we're, you know, we're lucky to come out every night and, and have a packed house. And it's a community that's accepted this team and it's accepted players like myself who, who call this home now. And, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to call it home, and I think Courts will be happy to call it home one day, too. <laughs> Evan. Let's, uh, let's stick with that topic. I, I want you guys to kind of think about this and, and tell the fans one of your favorite memories as a Maverick. And maybe it can be something on the ice or a funny story with the guys, but what's your favorite memory so far of being a Missouri Mavericks? I was, I was already trying to think, and it was, it, I would just have to say after, you know, every win and, and, and every loss, we kind of come to the middle of the ice, and, um, you know, we still get everybody cheering for us. It's kind of a, a good memory to have. You kind of, when you lose the game, obviously no one likes losing, but um, when you have that support, it's, uh, it, it means a lot and it goes a long way for, for guys in the dressing room. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of uh, memories that we can probably say up here, but I think just like the comeback games that we've had that really meant a lot. Like you can feel the energy in the, with, with you fans and with us just making that comeback and then eventually getting the win in overtime or a shootout. I think just looking back at those games, it's you know it's, it's a lot of fun. I think the home openers here are pretty special. Um, they announce everybody, everybody comes to the blue line, and at the end of it, you can't even hear, you know, anything. You can't even hear music going, just the fans are going crazy, and I think that's what 
you know, makes it so special. And, you know, have that memory every beginning of the season. Uh, Carlos is saying, I mean, it's been a great three years for me here. And, uh, Obviously, it's uh, every win's a great memory. Uh, if I have to remember one in uh, particular, it will be the one against Allen when Court scored to tie the game with a couple of minutes to go, then he scored in overtime. That was a uh, pretty good memory for me. It might have been when I first came, my first season, and there were about 15 games in the year. And started on the road, it's like only heard the stories of other guys talking about the fans and things like that. Uh, but to actually play my first home game here at Murray Experience, and, uh, you know, the atmosphere, I got chills, and, uh, you know, walking out those doors, keeping the house, like, those same chills, so it's, uh, it's a pretty good feeling. Well, I, I think I'll speak for the staff here and say that the average fans should be committed because we were upstairs uh, right after the doors opened. They were lined up down Valley Creek Parkway. You guys should be committed. This is an incredible turnout. There is no crazy. doubt. There is no doubt that we're going to be ready for it. What we wanted, uh, we'll talk about the transition from Coach Scott Holman to Coach Richard Mappenchuk now. Who's going to have to chuck him again? Well, obviously, obviously it'll be a new system. What are you guys expecting? Uh, what is Coach Mappenchuk told you about the system? What do the fans expect from the system and, and, and kind of and kind of game to play all season long? I think if whoever's talked to, to Coach kind of gets the feeling, it's uh, I guess what you see is what you get. It's it's going to be you know he's going to expect hard work. He's going to be demanding. Um, I've only known him I guess a couple months, but. You know, if you work hard and, and play the system yeah. that, he, that he wants you to play, and I think that's all he's going to ask for you. And I think that's what uh, each player should you know, expect from themselves. Yeah, he's going to keep uh, everyone in that locker room accountable. If you're if you're not going to you know give your full effort every game tonight, he's going to let you know. He's not going to you know beat around the bush. He's going to tell you straight up. And he's going to make sure that you're going to be ready next game. And, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a lot different than what uh, Coach Gilman brought uh, brought the five years to use here, but uh, I think it's going to be a good different. Pretty much what they said. I mean, there's really nothing much. I don't think the rest of us can say. Um, you know, just the accountability factor is going to be there. Back check, forward check. You know, get the job done at the end of the day. All right. We asked the fans to submit questions. We did get a question off of Twitter. We want to know what kind of what kind of work you guys do over the summer. Practice my short game. <laughs> I've been pretty good at NHL 15 in the past two weeks, so it's been over. Yeah, I think just the golf swing. You know, trying to get that ball straight down the, down the fairway. Stay at home, Dad. What's the benefit of uh, all of that? Then, uh, yeah, we try we try to work out too sometimes, and uh, that's pretty much it. A lot of guys work. We'll, uh, we'll do some uh, remolding, uh, construction. You know, what we can get on the side and uh, illegally, some of us. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it. All right, we're, we'll move into a little bit of a rapid fire question. So just give us the first thing that comes to your mind. And the first thing is your favorite pre game ritual. Napping. Coffee. Getting my stick ready. Pasta. I'll have to go with napping too. What is your favorite snack while on the ground? Combos. Beef jerky. Trail mix. Gummies. Sunflower <laughs> seeds. 
you do have to play games away from the Independence Event Center, so I gotta ask, where is your favorite road that you play? Probably Tulsa on a Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, Rapid City. I'll go Rapid City to I would say Rapid as well. If I had to pick a winner, Dave, you got that one spot on. That's, wow. Uh, and then lastly, which is what everybody here wants to know, if or when you win the President's Cup, what is the first thing you're going to eat or drink out of it? Rouge. Beer. <laughs> An IPA of some sort. Uh, I'll say wine from Stonehouse Winery here in the summit. <laughs> or Captain and Cove. All of the above. <laughs> Alright, well thank you so much, Kevin Lawson, Smash the Tunnel Dave Smithy, David Courtney, and John Scott Dixon for taking part in this. Thank you so much for that. Zach and I will be back here at the Miley Hockey Board. At some point this season, we'll let you know on our Facebook page and on Twitter, we are at ML underscore Hockey Board. Thanks very much, guys.